that movie was crazy. <laughs> how did how did you uh, come to to make this film? So how did this film come to be? Oh, yeah. Um, well, the the original uh, idea start it started off as a short film um, that we made back in 2016 and was kind of on the festival circuit then. And at that time, we had no intention of making it a feature. I don't think we could have dreamt of how that would happen. <laughs> and um, in in the meantime, we uh, we decided to pitch it as a TV show and then sold it to IFC, and then um, it didn't go. <laughs> and um, at that point, we, we kind of like always kept uh, like thinking about the world of greener grass, and we'd see things or overhear things and be like, oh, that's so greener grass. And we just kept um, going back to this world, and, and we decided uh, to make a feature of it. Um, and so shot it in, or started writing uh, in January of 2018, shot it in August, and then premiered in January. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. So the question, just to repeat, was about um, the sort of collaboration between horror and comedy in this yeah. film and how you managed to sort of find a middle ground between them. Well, I think we can start off by talking about growing up in the suburbs. <laughs> I think like that was something we, we so wanted to capture that feeling of like everybody trying to you know keep a, a bright face all the time while like truly terrible things are going around and people are going through horrible things and I think that feeling of paranoia like I know I lived on a cul-de-sac and there's just that <laughs> feeling of like everybody's talking about each other and um, you know, in playing with, there's a serial killer on the loose, but one of the most horrifying things that can happen is you have lipstick on your teeth. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah playing and everyone with that. so thinks that, so they're so scared of the serial killer when the most terrifying thing is their best friend. <laughs> That's yeah. right, nice. Job. <laughs> yeah, so we we loved it. It just it was such a part of the story we wanted to tell always is that having that horror aspect and. Um, it's so much of the rhythm of comedy is tension and release, and then it, horror is the same way. And so they both feed together so nicely, and it's really fun. And I think I want to shout out to our um, composer, Sam Nobles. So all of the original music in the movie is written by this w one guy, Sam Nobles, who does an incredible job of help us, helping us create that tone, um, and it just added so much. Yeah, so the question was about upholding and maintaining the very unique aesthetic that this film seems to have. Yeah. Um, we really have to give a big shout out to our production designer, Lee Poindexter, and also our costume designer, Lauren Oppelt, who really took our seed of, of uh, an idea and really built this beautiful world. And I think two like kind of overall things that were important to us is that it felt anywhere in America. We, like our favorite thing is to hear people say like, you must have grown up in Southern California, that's so how it is, or you must have grown up in Michigan. And we had someone in Utah be like, this is about Mormons, right? <laughs> yeah. And so we wanted people to watch this and be like, that's, I, I can identify with where that is. And then um, another thing is we wanted it to have a certain timelessness, um, so, like at the bowling alley, it's not flat screen monitors, it's you know the old school clunky monitors and you don't see cell phones and um, we didn't want uh, modernity to detract from, or distract. Nostalgia rather. was such a big part of our writing, yeah. Um, and Lauren Oppel, well, what worked really nicely is that Lauren and Lee, the costumer and production designer, lived together throughout the whole shoot. And they worked in such close collaboration with each other. So Lauren would play her costumes off of the colors that Lee was doing in the scene, which was just everything to us. And uh, Lauren did an incredible job of, uh, you probably noticed, color blocking each character. So my character is always in pink, for example. and. Dawn's character starts out in blue, and then as she takes on more and more of Jill's life, the pink seeps in and she becomes purple until finally the last scene when Lisa's pink and actually wearing the exact outfit that I wore in the opening scene. Uh, this is a very cool touch. Yeah, so the question was about the, the use of braces and the symbolism that the braces hold in the film. You know, we thought, how can we look younger? 
<laughs> um, braces were a part of greener grass since the short film. It was um, something that we, we loved physically representing these certain themes we wanted to play with, having this tangible representation of that. And braces are just um, one of those examples of details we had so much fun peppering into the script that um, it's, we, we wanted to explain that one of the very most important things to us is that although so much of it seems bizarre, there's truly nothing in there that's just weird for weird sake. We poured over the, the themes we wanted to explore and then all those details fit into one of those. Um, and we had so much fun putting together um, a puzzle, so to speak, of those things. Yeah. What was the hardest scene to be able to keep your decorum or keep your face? You, you mean to not laugh or just to break character? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, um, I'm trying to think. There was, we were blessed with working with so many incredible improvisers and just very, very funny uh, people, Beck Bennett and, yes. and Neil Casey. Um, I'm trying to think. There was there, many times, but it caught us by surprise, I think. One thing that comes to mind is, so the little boy who plays my son is this incredible child actor named Julian Hilliard. His name in real life is Julian. You might recognize him from The Haunting of Hill House, um, which he was on, yes. <laughs> um, Julian, so that scene when he does the Yora School, um, <laughs> He was in such a funny mood that day for whatever reason and had to you, cry in that scene. And there was, I feel like there was just so many funny things that happened. One of them is, that, so we were in the middle of that scene and he had, so before he needed to cry, he, he's like, um, can I please take a few minutes? And we're like, yes, of course. And he will sit in the corner and just sit in, you know, cross-legged and think to himself, which is so sweet. And Beck and I were just like, so getting such a kick out of him. And then, um, so when you're on set, this was another thing that happened while we were shooting that scene. When you have to go to the bathroom, you say, I have to 10-1. So it's like, oh, where's Dawn? Oh, she's 10-1. Like, she's in the bathroom. And Julian, we're like in the middle of this scene, like I think in the middle of a take, and he stopped and he goes, excuse me, I have to 10-2. <laughs> and he was gone for a long time. 